الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونتوب إليه ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رحمة الله للعالمين خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله We praise Allah We offer to him our thanks and our gratitude and our devotion and we ask him to grant us what will make us of his worthy of his mercy and grace in this life and in the hereafter and we ask him to shower his blessings and peace on his mercy to the words the last of the prophets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that there is no deity save Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, this is the first Jum'ah after the month and after the Eid. And now, there is a sense of business as usual. And I am admonishing myself and you, reminding myself and you, that yes, it should be a business, but no, it should not be as usual. Business, business as usual is for people who did not pass through a special experience that supposedly changed them and changed their outlook and empowered them and equipped them to start business super usual, better than usual, exceeding the usual. Otherwise, will be like You're driving your car to the gas station, you fill the tank, then you go nowhere after that. So I am reminding myself in particular that we take on life now with a sense of rejuvenation and with a sense of empowerment and a sense of feeling that we ought to do better than what we have been doing before. We emphasized in the Eid and in the talk yesterday several things. One of them was the sense of redemption. And what I wanted to do is to elaborate on that concept when you feel that you have a chance to be completely forgiven and starting on a new slate, this is redemption. And this value in Islam, to a great extent, is unique. We know that all religions talk about repentance and about redemption. However, in Islam, you don't need mediators to offer you this sense. You don't need institutions or acceptance by others to be redeemed. We do it on our own. We do the right thing. We seek only God by doing the right thing. And we are promised that when we do it, Our previous sins are forgiven, 
we are completely redeemed and we are starting afresh. This freshness that Islam offers to us should be invested by every one of us. It is a liberating feeling. Especially when we prove to ourselves that we can be in command of our wants and of our desires, so we really need to be empowered. And we feel that new power is pouring into us and enabling us to perform our duties and to carry on our tasks that are given to us by God Almighty and be more effective in our personal, our community, our society's life, and hence be more effective in the human life at large. We said that this feeling would enable us to transcend above the sorrows and the griefs that we lived through throughout this year because this year has been characterized by two categories of calamities. Natural disasters and demand made disasters. And each one of them is different and is different the way we handle it. I don't like the word disasters. I would say difficult tests. We are, have been exposed this year in particular to do different categories of very difficult tests. One of them, natural, in terms of the tsunami, the hurricanes, and the earthquakes, and everything that we see and we know about. And there is a way of handling that. And then there are, we are tested by difficulties imposed on human, human beings, by human beings. The wars, especially senseless wars, that we don't know exactly how they started or how they may end. Occupation, the atrocities of occupation everywhere. Oppression and the dictatorships. Repression and the injustice. Discrimination. and bias, acts of terrorism committed by persons or by groups or by states, the large scale official terrorism that nobody is willing to talk about, all these are inflictions caused by human beings. And the victims are human beings and usually the victims are the helpless hopeless, non-participant, passive human beings. They are the ones who are stepped on and stampeded in this rush of event. And as I said, it, it, it is a test. And what is the meaning of a test? Is that God will watch you to see how you act vis-a-vis -vis these tests. How you act vis-a-vis -vis the unbearable suffering in Kashmir, in India, in Pakistan, in Philippines, and in New Orleans, mm -hmm. Honduras, especially the national, what we call natural disasters. There are two attitudes, two main attitudes, there are more than two. But one attitude is to start blaming Astaghfirullahaladzim, blaming God. And you hear it in Muslim circles. And you hear it on TV and talk shows, etc. But why did God do that? This is the first failure of the test. God is not answerable to us. The moment you ask God, why did you do that? 
Astaghfirullah Azim, he is not God anymore. You are the one who is holding God accountable, not the other way around. And this is a major disorientation. The better question is, it happened, what am I going to do? The question should be shifted, should be reversed to address us vis-a-vis -vis this unbearable suffering of men, women, and the children in the wilderness, in the freezing weather, under that terrible situation, homeless and destitute, what is the responsibility of these human beings and what is the responsibilities of the Muslims? And let us know this responsibility and try to do it. That should be the attitude. That should be the paradigm shift. But to keep saying and arguing, and the people are arguing until they get blue. God did this because they are bad or because they are good, which is brutal. People are inflicted and told them they deserve it. It's horrible, cruel attitude. And we keep arguing, no, what they did is that there is a blessing there. Don't worry about God. He knows what he is doing. Worry about yourself. What can we do about that? about the man-made disasters, we ought to do something about it. Yes, we might not be able to solve all the problems or change the globe of earth to paradise, but as a Muslim, we are supposed to lead humanity on a road with the clear signs of compassion, justice, human dignity and peace. Those are the main landmarks on the road of Islam. And we cannot do that by just talking or alone. We ought to reach out to join hands with decent human beings of any religion, of any ideas, of any ideologies and say if you agree with us that this is in unjust let us work to correct it. If you agree with us that this is cruel and void of compassion, let us interject to compassion about it. Whatever situation, whether it is the foreign policy of our country, whatever it is our behavior, whatever what we are doing, what certain governments are doing, it doesn't matter. But a Muslim is supposed to stand compassionately and passionately on the side of justice to preserve human dignity and to achieve peace. It's not a difficult equation. This is what we are for. This is what we are cut out to do. And this cannot be done in isolation. This should be done in cooperation. And so we should reach out to start exactly doing that, investing the empowerment we got through the different exercises and the courses that we have been through. Adu Allah inna huwa ghafur rahim. Allahumma ghafur lana wa rahamna wa ghafina wa ghafuhanna wa tawalana wa tuwalayna inna ka anta tawabu rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nashkuruh. Wa nas'aluhu al-afwa wa al-afiyata fi al-dunya wa al-akhirah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this difficult year should leave us with clearer vision about ourselves, about our beliefs, and about our agenda of tasks, and about our plan of action. And we ought to form that together through our own public discussions and the debates until we form a concrete vision of life of today, life now. It is very disturbing to see Muslims very ready to talk about life 1,000 years ago and who did what and was it right and was it wrong. And who should have been the Khalif and who should have not been? And they are not talking about what's happening to us now. 
what we are facing now and in this changing world in, in a pace that is unprecedented in human history where can we locate Islam and the Muslims the problem is if we don't do that now in that window opportunity the new generation the new Muslim generation will be puzzled and bewildered and will fall easy prey to the to the voices of of anger and of hate and of empty rhetoric and of false emotions and the passions that can lead anywhere because people when they feel vacuum and I am talking about young people when they feel vacuum they become insecure when they become insecure they gravitate to whatever gives them even a false sense of security make it a group make it a cult make it be it a gang be it a extreme ideology be it whatever but something to fill in that void that they are feeling in their sinking hearts it is our resp responsibility towards our new generation to engage with them on a serious dialogue about their role in human civilization that's being formed now. Yes, talk to them about the history, about the past, about Hadrat Omar and the Hadrat Ali. Talk as models and examples, but the issue is what are you going to do in this life that's being changed in this way? that his cell phone is now all the fashion you put on your cell phone your email then this is all the fashion you put your TV also things are changing month to month and year to year where are we going to be in that still arguing who should have been the Caliph 1400 years ago are we still arguing whether we can strike on the socks to pray or not that will make us fall in the deep black hole of irrelevance. We have to be to, to humanity and to ourselves. And it's not a formidable task. It just needs people who have the bravery of the heart and the clarity of the mind. And they are not afraid of anything but of their creator so that we open these dialogues and these debates and we then add and progress and grow. I ask Allah to guide us in the right path. I ask Him to give us the stamina and the power that we need. I ask Him to give us the intelligence, understanding and the vision and the clarity so that we see our road clear the way we should take it. And I ask Him to forgive our shortcomings and our mistakes اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا وتولنا وتب علينا وسامحنا وسدد خطانا إنك أنت الرحمن الرحيم وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد أقم الصلاة